Hey guys, this is Jeff Conti, your YouTube knife mentor. Uh, you know, I've done a, a couple of videos about, uh, you know, design and uh, laying out the details. What do you want the knife to have as components? And, and sometimes, and I, I mentioned this, but I didn't uh, elaborate. Uh, sometimes the goal isn't uh, to build a knife. Sometimes the goal is to just to draw. Uh, and if you don't have a desire to draw, um, then maybe this won't mean anything to you, or maybe you need to develop a design, a, a desire to draw. Uh, but that's where I'm at today. I want to talk about uh, creative knife drawing. Um, I have no intention whatsoever of designing a knife today. Uh, if I wind up designing a knife, that's fine. I don't, I don't care one way or the other. Um, if, if I don't, it's fine. I'll have had fun. That's the plan, drawing a knife. So what is it about creative knife drawing that I want you to know? Number one, I want you to know I'm not an artist. Now, if you are like me and you're not an artist, just you know, admit it up front. You're not an artist, so what? Does that mean you can't draw? No, of course not. It just means you're not an artist. You don't draw you know, beautiful horses racing across the prairie or you don't draw beautiful women or you don't draw I don't know what else, uh, sun uh, 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 landscapes or beautiful structures or whatever, you know. It's not my thing. I'm not, a draw I'm not an artist. Um, but you know what? I don't care. That's the important part right there is just let that go. Here, let's just get rid of it right now. I don't care. Okay? I don't care if I'm not an artist. Uh, because the point of creative knife drawing isn't to be an artist. The point is to uh, do a few things on paper with a couple of supplies and see what happens. That's what the point of creative knife drawing is. So, if you don't enjoy drawing, uh, this might not be for you. Or, you know, you, maybe you've never tried it. Maybe it's something you need to give it a shot and see if you like it. And when I show you what I'm going to do here, and by the way, I'm not going to do multiple takes on this unless the phone rings or something stupid like that. Um, <coughs> uh, I'm not going to do multiple takes on this to try to get it right. You're just going to see what I do. And, uh, and I don't always do it the same way, by the way. Sometimes I do it differently, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to post this video and uh, hopefully it'll be encouraging enough to somebody out there that they'll say, you know what, I think I'm just going to sit out at the table like Jeffrey did and I'm just going to do what he told me to do. Okay, so what do I think you should do? Number one, uh, and this is number four on this list, but I think that you should let your physical, and I'm gonna explain that, your mental, and then your soul or your spiritual juices flow. All three of these, maybe four, depends on how you look at the human uh, human being. I see it as soul and spiritual, but you, know, you may just see physical and mental, I don't care. That's not a important here. What's important is that you realize that you let these go and you let them go together. Okay, that's the point. Um, uh, close down all of that logic and reasoning that a lot of people have, or some people have. That's why artists are probably so good. They don't have all that logic floating around. They just, they, uh, well, anyway, they, plus I think uh, artists also have really good uh, fine motor skills and I just don't. I have gross motor skills. That's why I can do something like this. And it's, uh, you know, it looks okay, but it's, I'm not trying to refine anything. So you're going to see in a minute. But let those juices flow, okay? Just let yourself sit down and relax. Hey, I should write that down. That's a good one. Okay, don't try. I'll, see, there it is right there, right? Don't try. Relax. Enjoy, okay? I told you, I enjoy drawing, so let these juices flow. Don't try, just relax and enjoy the process. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit about the logic, and, and the logic is, you know, you need to have you know, good paper, uh, and some people like drawing paper, that's what I prefer, drawing paper. Um, some people like graph paper, you know, their mind just works a little bit better, but I would steer you away in creative knife drawing, I would steer you away from graph paper. Because for me, the tendency is to try to make things symmetrical, to try to dial in a particular line, or, and I'm not being creative anymore. I'm being structural. 
So I would steer you away from graph paper. Um, the only time I would use writing paper is if I don't have drawing paper. I don't ever use graph paper unless I'm not creative drawing. If I'm actually trying to fix a problem in a knife, maybe my double-edged dagger doesn't look symmetrical, and so I'll draw it on graph paper. But writing paper I use when I'm somewhere else, and I'm like, oh man, I got this idea. And then I get down and I just kind of start creatively putting this idea on paper, and I don't have my drawing pad with me, so I use writing paper. That's no big deal. It's just that writing paper is almost like graph paper. You know, it's got straight parallel lines and it has a propensity to try to make you do something and you're no longer being creative. Okay, so what about pens, pencils, and erasers? Okay, let me start with erasers first. And I did not find my favorite eraser. It's actually a red colored pencil type eraser like this where you remove material and you expose the eraser. This one isn't, it's a little harder. It's not as uh, soft. And so it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't erase as good, but I'll, uh, maybe I'll put a link in the description down below when I find the actual eraser that I like. Um, this is one that I like, if you're drawing on paper that is like a uh, vellum, Okay, uh, this type of eraser works better, and I don't know why, but uh, it is plenty soft, softer than this one. Uh, but on vellum, this type of eraser really works well. On this drawing paper, it's not quite as good, and quite frankly, I don't like these at all. I don't use them. I brought it out here just to show you. Um, I should also say, as you can tell, I've used this a lot. It gets so worn down, you wind up scratching your, your paper with the, uh, the metal eraser holder there. Anyway, so it doesn't work very well. Um, so these two are my primaries. How, I'm sorry, are my alternate and contingent. Um, but I use, if I'm going to draw with a pencil, I use that red eraser. And uh, like I said, I'll, get a, I'll put a link in the description or a photograph or something when I go to edit this. Okay, so that's my pens. I'm sorry, my pencils. Yeah, um, and then just a regular number two pencil. Uh, you know, I don't have, I don't use anything fancy. I don't use mechanical pencils. I like to sharpen my pencil, and I like to keep it sharp. I don't like dull pencils, and mechanical pencils are just reliably dull, right? They just, I don't like them. They're never sharp. So use a, a regular pencil. Uh, there are some mechanical pencils. My father has one. Uh, that have a specific uh, uh, sharpener. You go around in a circle as you increase the, the, the lead coming out of the holder, the mechanical holder, and then you can sharpen those. Um, and another good way to do it is a piece of sandpaper. So you just take and you'll rotate your pencil on the sandpaper. And that's a good way to sharpen a pencil uh, if you're not wanting to actually... Um, you know, take away some of the material. Okay, uh, I often prefer to use pens. Now this is my favorite pen. It's a precise V5 of all of the pens I've ever drawn with. That's what I wrote this down with. This is my favorite pen, period. Um, it's very, very consistent. I don't wind up with gaps in my pen as I draw with it. Um, it has an even line. I really like this pen. I almost always have more of them laying around um, because I like them so much. Um, I'm not a big fan of these except when I'm going to highlight or let's say I'm going to uh, add, maybe I add a little, I'm going to you know, creatively just thicken a line or something, I might use the Sharpie Extra. Is it Extra Fine? Ultra Fine. The Sharpie Ultra Fine. Um, if I am going to put a drawing on paper for use in YouTube, I will almost always use something like this, the, the regular Sharpie Permanent. Is this? Yeah, Fine Point. Um, I don't do it for accuracy. I just do it so it's easy to see. If I'm sending a customer an email or a photograph through text messaging, I will often use the Sharpie so that it's easy for the customer to see what the knife looks like. It's not, I don't usually use it when I'm drawing. I use it when I am going over a drawing and then gonna send it out. But, uh, you know, to each his own, right? 
Okay, so I'm gonna get out my favorite pen. The Precise V5 Rolling Point Extra Fine. I'm not gonna use a pencil today because it's hard for you to see really is the main reason. And uh, so I usually start with some kind of drawing exercise. Oh, my dog is dreaming. <laughs> drawing exercise is where, and it's kind of hard. You're, you're on a tripod, see how you're shaking? Yeah, because you're on a tripod and you're right by my elbow. Um, so it's gonna be a little hard for me, but let me show you. I usually start with some kind of an exercise, you know? Like I'm just, I just do some kind of exercise so I can kind of get the flow of a, a little bit of, um, I want to compare what I'm feeling with my hand when I draw and what I'm seeing with my eyes. And then also, I told you already that I allow my soul and my spirit to get involved. You know, I'll see a line like this and I'll say, I like that. That's letting my soul and my spirit get involved. Seeing this one, I don't like this one, right? I don't like this one at all. So, and these four, really, I like them all except for this last one. I just let, I, I don't mind doing circles. Um, I don't know, man, just do some, do some drawing, do some, some line work. I guess it's called line work. I'm not an artist, I told you that, I'm a knife maker. So do some line work that helps you to kind of see and feel, ooh, I like that one, right? By the way, I'm gonna talk about two things. I've learned what I like, okay? My soul and my spirit have connected on one very important, well, two, I'm gonna say two, very, two things that are important to me. They may not be important to you. I don't care. That's it's your thing, right? To me, there's two things I want you to know. One is I really love the look of the feminine form. I'm not talking about sex. I'm not talking about naked women, blah, blah, whatever. For example, the shape of a woman's calf is different than the shape of a man's calf. And I like it. I think it's gorgeous. I, I love the way the curve flows on a calf, a woman's calf, um, a woman's hips, and uh, and the way they flow uh, to the thighs and to the waist, and there's a, a you know women's breasts and their shoulders and their arms. The wimp, the female form, is uh, something that I really strive for in my drawing, my creative drawing. Not necessarily when I'm designing a knife from a rigid set of requirements, but when I'm creatively drawing. And you're gonna see in a minute, I'm sure. Um, the other thing is that lines have a propensity to me, the way I see them, to go where they, where, where they should go. Now, where do you get the word should from, right? How does a line should anything? Well, I'm gonna tell you. This one, this line, it has a straight spot. That line does not want to go there. The line really wants to do something like this. And and we're not talking about the line wanting. We're talking about my mind wanting the line to do that, right? And I just try to fill in the gaps until I get that line to where it's pleasing to my eye. So when I said a line, when I say a line wants to or a line should, I'm talking about what I like, what I know pleases my eye. Um, I, I should, uh, uh, let me say one other third thing. Um, this is kind of common in knife making. Sometimes you'll have a handle that'll come down and it'll stop where the hand guard is and then the blade will do this as well or the blade will go like this you know kind of this odd stopping part right there i don't like that i've learned i don't like that i don't design knives that are built like that it happens very rarely the last time i did this was probably 15 years ago i made a big buoy i'm gonna go get it right now so you can see hang on I know a lot of people don't like to 
to wait, but I want you to see this. Um, the only reason this knife has this stopping point and then a go point is two reasons. One, it's a narrow tang, and this piece of antler has its own shape. And then I have the blade, which I created separately and drawing what I wanted. I did not draw the handle. I was just creatively drawing what I wanted, what I liked. And then when I put these two together, this is what I came up with. Now, when you put it in your hand, it feels good. When you put it and use the knife, it works good. Uh, you know, so I settle. I, I guess I should say I'm accepting that while this doesn't please me, I'm okay with it. There's a little bit of difference between uh, I don't like it and I'm okay with it. And that's where I'm at here. Um, I kind of have to accept this sometimes. If I really wanted this to flow, I would angle this handle way down so this little arc would match and flow into the back of the knife. But then it would be too much of an angle to actually be a serviceable knife, at least the way I wanted this knife to look when it was done. So that's what I'm trying to say about some knives that have a stopping point. Um, most knives that do this, I will completely redraw the knife. I, I just will not accept it at all. So let's go ahead and do some knife drawing. You know, that was only took me a few minutes and I talk most of the time. Um, I don't have a desire for a particular style of knife. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let myself go here just a minute. Try to stop talking and just start, I don't know, experience the drawing, right? I think I'm gonna go with, yeah, okay, I like that. Mm-hmm. I think I want this to come down more. There you go. I like ogives. Now, here we are. If you don't see the feminine shape here, well, I do, and, um, and I like it, you know? So I'm gonna keep going with this. I don't know where I'm gonna go with this, but I'm gonna keep going with it. Actually, I just kinda got a desire here. I think, yeah, I like that, I like that. So, uh, I, I tend to like something. Uh, put a little belly in there. Uh, bring this up. Okay, I, I don't like this, but I don't care. You know, I can keep going with this. I'm feeling this right here, you know. I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, a little bit of line um, adjustment. How about that? I use the word adjustment. Line adjustment. Yeah, I kind of like that. So how about? Um, I think this wants to come up. See, I use the word wants, right? The line doesn't want, I want, but. That's the way I talk when I'm drawing creative like this. And no, I don't like that, so I'm just gonna... Eh. No. Okay, I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna do this again, kind of, and I'll probably do this again, and then I'll do something different here. Hey, that came out pretty darn good just right off the bat. I'm not gonna mess with that at all. I like it. And I told you, cause you're right here beside me, I'm gonna try to... Yeah, a little deeper. Sometimes what I have to do is rotate my my paper so I can actually use the natural wrist movement of my pen. Take advantage of that anyway, yeah. So this is kind of, see how it's kind of going away? It's kind of cool, I kind of like that. A 
Okay. That's kind of cool. So um, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid this for a minute, and I'm gonna come back to this right here. I gotta keep checking the camera, make sure I'm in your field of view, so you can see what's happening here. Um, you know, I don't know how am I. What do I what do I like here? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. All right, now, oh yeah. I'm not saying this is a good idea, but it feels good drawing it. And uh, I don't think I like it in terms of function, but I do like it in terms of lines, right? So, and this I don't like, I don't like this coming straight down. So I want this to continue Something like that, and then something like that. Or, oh, see, I like that way better. I just don't like, I'm not a big fan of straight lines. I liked curves, I like arcs. That's why I like the feminine form. It's just full of curves. I just, I do, I like it. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Um, let's see here, and you know what? There's a lot of women artists out there that like the feminine form, too. Uh, we don't have to get into stupid talk, you know, but we can enjoy or appreciate uh, what we're looking at, what we're thinking in terms of knives or just creative drawing. Okay, so anyway, that sometimes I'll stop right there and I'll just move on because, you know, like, you know what, I like this. Let me let, me let this uh, percolate. You know, let me cogitate a little bit. And this, sometimes, this will grow on me later on. I'll be like, dude, I actually like that. Let me do something with that. Um, and by the way, I always keep my drawings. I have every drawing I've ever made, unless it got lost or damaged or, you know, something like that. But otherwise, I have folders downstairs with all of my drawings from 25, 35 years ago. I don't know how long back. Well, I mean, I was a kid when I did some of the drawings. I'm 57, so, geez, it must have been 40 years probably. Quite a long time. Anyway, this is my creative drawing. This is how I do it. I oh, let me, put a, let me put a blade on this, right? Let me put a... So with all these sweeping arcs, I don't see a straight uh, grind line, right? I don't see that. What I see is maybe, and I always like to go back from the where the edge ends. I like to come up back a ways. And I see this as kind of being an, its own arc. Not a straight corner or, or whatever, but its own kind of, its own kind of arc. And then I love to follow, I just do, I love to follow the the, the profile. So I try to keep this almost always try to follow a parallel line with the actual profile of the knife. That's kind of cool. So I'll go up here and do this one too. And I'm just gonna bring this one up, you know, like that. Now these are tough to grind in, but I'm not worried about structure and function and making the knife. I'm just creative drawing. That's all I'm doing here. So, you know, put your initials, JC. Uh, what's the date? Today is the, I don't even know what date it is. Oh, I'm using my phone, so I can't check my phone. And I'm retired, so I guess I don't really care, but I know, oh, it's, uh, I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. This is Jeff Conti, your YouTube knife mentor. I want you to go out and have fun making a knife.